<clears throat> so the our goal is not to make a ideal anti reflective coating but our good our goal is should be to make a good uh, light trapper and this is a much harder problem to solve and uh, so let me give you some pointers to how we can uh, solve this problem so again what i in an ideal world what i want is when i have white light uh, incident basically all of that uh, should uh, get transmitted in the cell so there should be zero reflectivity back out of this uh, surface and then it should get 100% reflected over here and then every uh, every time it bounces off it should get 100% reflected so that's my ideal world situation that i want but usually these two things this zero reflectivity here and this 100% reflectivity over here does not go hand in hand usually if you try to enhance one the other enhance it like that Okay, so the technique which is uh, used to enhance uh, this uh, light trapping is uh, uh, one is what I already described. So instead of putting that anti-reflective coating at the at both the sides, you usually put at only at the side which is facing the sunlight, and then you put a reflector over here. And the intensity of the light would essentially decrease. So if the width of this is representing intensity, it would decrease by the time it reaches the top surface again. <clears throat> so this is a, 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 you know one scheme that is used. The other scheme that is uh, used is uh, texturing. So how does texturing it uh, helps in uh, enhancing the light trapping? So what texturing does is that instead of uh, for let's say a ray which was coming almost uh, uh, normally incident, which was incident normally on this uh, solar cell, now when I have this uh, texture present uh, on the surface. So instead of uh, you know this thing being normal on this surface, now it's being incident at a large angle. And so when I have this light incident over here, now this presence of this texturing would throw it off, or you know would essentially uh, transmit this uh, photon in a direction which is uh, at a at a much higher angle. So it will go in, then it will reflect back. And then when by the time it comes back and reaches this uh, front surface, it will see a very high angle again. And my hope is that this angle is uh, higher than the critical angle and it ends up staying uh, in the system. Even though it's now due to the presence of uh, this anti-reflective coating, it's easier to escape the system. Right? So this is the whole idea of uh, light trapping uh, using uh, texturing that you want to make more and more of these photons which are incident normally you want to make them go at these high angles so first of all you are increasing the path length of these photons so now if you look at the amount of distance that this photon travels it was only this much when it was incident normally when you are uh, making it go at, at this uh, grazing angle it will travel a much larger distance so hopefully a lot of it will get absorbed by the time it comes back and you're hoping that by the time it comes back, it also comes back at a very high angle. So it it uh, it ends up staying uh, within the cell. Do you have any question? Yes. Hmm. Okay, so you're talking about where does this uh, four n square, that's four comes from in this four n square. Okay, so let me, I'll describe that just in a minute. So this was something that Eli also talked about, uh, four n square. But why does four, why not two, or why not eight, right? So, uh, so what Ben said was that he referred to this maximum limit of uh, light trapping. And uh, for a material which has a refractive index of n, usually say that you can increase this path so if you had a path of uh, let's say l over here so you could increase that path maximum by 4 n square these n typically for most of the semiconductor it's somewhere around you know between 3.5 to 3.6 3.7 range so usually you get around the square of that is approximately 11 ish 12 ish and times 4 so you get around 50 at maximum you can get a 50 time increase in the path length uh, using this uh, using this system. So, but why 4 n squared? So let me come to that. <coughs> so anyway, so this idea of uh, a large angle scat this idea of texture is to introduce uh, this uh, scattering at uh, large angles. 
and uh, when the light is scattered from the top surface it is uh, basically it grows uh, at grazing angle into your uh, piece of silicon and when it uh, hopefully when it returns back it has a large angle and it suffers this uh, total internal reflection and it ends up staying in the silicon <clears throat> so now let's let's uh, turn to the question that uh, ben asked that what is this maximum limit uh, of uh, light trapping so it uh, as i uh, already mentioned it's uh, given by 4n square right so this n square it comes because you have uh, more modes available and whenever you have a, uh, a material with a refractive index of n your density of states which are available for photons it goes up by n cube and then the angle goes down by n so you usually have n square modes available for uh, for these uh, photons so this n square factor uh, comes from that the factor of 2 comes from because now you have essentially these two reflection or you know you have this reflection from the back side of uh, uh, your silicon assuming that you have an ideal reflector over here the other factor of 2 comes from the fact that this is not just a 2D device, but in fact this is a 3D slab of uh, silicon. So you have this, instead of having just that 2D picture, you have this uh, cone which is available for escaping. And that gives you a cos theta factor. And when you average it over, you get another factor of 2. So instead of, uh, you know, when I consider, and when I look at from this angle, I see that the light is getting enhanced twice. But if I look at it from a 3D perspective, essentially it will bounce and it will go in some other direction and it will come out at some other point, right? So there's, due to that 3D nature, you get another factor of two. So there's, uh, there's overall a factor of uh, four and square. <coughs> so this density of uh, modes which are available, it goes up uh, as the square of the refractive index. And then there's a factor of two from this uh, double passing, from this uh, reflection from the bottom. And then this, uh, there's a factor of two from that uh, th averaging of that uh, cone or that geometrical average. And uh, I've put this handout uh, on the class website which describes uh, the original, this is the original paper from uh, Eli and uh, Cody which they published in 1982 which describes uh, this maximum limit on the amount of light traffic. <clears throat> so, a lot of people have asked that, you know, how can I make this more than 4 n square? Suppose you have a really shabby absorber, can you make it more than uh, 4 n square? And the answer is yes, but you'll have to use uh, systems which, uh, uh, which are essentially, they restrict your uh, angle of acceptance. So, for example, you have this uh, concentrated uh, concentrator system and you're trying to concentrate light by, you know, by focusing through this uh, funnel. And then you concentrate it and then make it incident on this cell. So this light, even when it tries to escape out, you know, when it when its path length escape, es exceeds a 4 inch square, you can still reflect it back uh, into the system. So there are ways you can make it uh, more than 4 inch square, but you require these external elements, or you require these uh, uh, reduction in uh, acceptance angle techniques to, to do so. <clears throat> okay, so let me ask uh, this uh, question now, and let me you know, get your guy's opinion on uh, what do you think is a better texturing scheme. So what I have over here is that I have these uh, textured pyramids, but they are very regular in shape, so this would be something like this, where these all these pyramids are regularly shaped, and they are looking you know, very nicely, as you can see in this figure. Versus I could do a very rough process, maybe I just uh, put my silicon in some acid or put it in a KOH solution, which gives me a texture which has this, you know, randomly shaped pyramid. Uh, in fact, it could be a texture where, you know, it's a randomly, uh, randomly shaped, either randomly shaped pyramids, or it could be even randomly shaped uh, pits which are present uh, throughout the, uh, throughout my surface. So, what do you guys think? Well, I mean, what is, which is a better scheme for light trapping? Scheme number one, which is very regular, or scheme number two, which is uh, these irregular pyramids or these, you know, just a random rough surface. Um, I'd probably go to random, because when you're trying to make it more than four inch So 
So what Daniel is, did you hear? Everybody hear what you hear? So what Daniel is saying that uh, if I if I have this regular scheme, it might uh, it might work better if I have the light incident directly at uh, at the normal of the surface, and it might not work uh, best if I have the light coming in at any other angle, right? Well, Okay. All right. About uh, does anybody think this is better or does everybody agree that a random is is better? Is is it better or is it equally good? Okay, so there's one argument that you know it's it's better. Random is probably better because it's just random that it's better. It works better for uh, multiple angles of incidence, not just directly from the norm. How about uh, how about which is better for light to escape, or you know which is better uh, from the point of uh, uh, reciprocity, which is better? I mean, any other things that come to your mind? Why, why you might use one versus the other? Okay. So Prana is saying for LEDs they prefer a regular structure. Why? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you are bringing a point, which is very important. So so far, how I've presented this light trapping is in terms of uh, geometrical optics. That I've assumed that the f dimensions of these uh, features are, uh, you know, these are large features. These are hundreds of mi of microns, right? Or more than hundreds of microns. The uh, if you have these features uh, in uh, less than a micron, where they are in the range which is the same as the wavelength of the light which is incident, so the solar spectrum is in that, uh, you know, say 200 to 800, 900 uh, nanometer range. So if if it's if you are in the range of uh, of the light, then if your range if your feature size is in the range of uh, the wavelength of the light, then then there's a you can't use geometrical optics, right? Then you have to use wave optics, and then you'll have to figure out uh, how these different uh, schemes are behaving. So what you're probably saying, are you referring to that, or? Okay, so that is something we'll study when we talk about thin film. That uh, there uh, you have these light uh, enhance, you know, enhancement techniques which make use of. Uh, you have to consider the wave nature of the light, and uh, yeah. So right now, but right now, just ignore that. I mean, let's assume that these are these features are bigger than the wavelength of the light. Yes, Dan. Okay, so Dan is really pushing his argument. He wants this to win. So the two arguments is saying this is better from cost. This is better. It works better throughout the day. Right? Does anybody want to add something to it? So I mean, he's uh, he's right on the dot, right on the money over here. So this thing is uh, is much cheaper to produce over here. You will require some form of lithography uh, to give you a, a guiding pattern which you can etch into. On this side, if you want to produce this uh, pyramids, random pyramids, you could very easily use a KOH etch. Sometimes people just don't even make pyramids; they do an acidic etch, which uh, produces this random texture, and that comes out to be. Uh, nearly as good as a uh, uh, pyramidal structure as well. <coughs> so, ideally, we want to scatter light, uh, you know, very uniform, uniformly across uh, different uh, uh, angles. And uh, uh, the way to achieve that uh, practically is by this uh, random uh, pyramidal structuring. 
and uh, it could be on one side, it could be on both the sides. A lot of time you take the whole thing and dip it uh, into the facet, so it's done on both the sides. Um, and then periodic patterning has also been tried. In fact, the pearl cell uh, from uh, from UNSW, it, uh, which is uh, holds the record for efficiency around 25%. And keep in mind, you know, when I tell that this is 25% uh, or uh, uh, this, these are what are called as the champion cells. So these are these small cells which are made just for the purpose of demonstrating that high efficiency. And they have these random, instead of having that random texture, they have these very periodically placed uh, lattice. But they work best only in the lab when you have shining light directly from the top. And it's optimized to enhance light trapping when the light is coming directly from the top. But uh, what Ben was saying that if you have a real life application, they are, even if you are using tracking, your angle of incidence will vary slightly over the course of the day. So these uh, periodic patterns, they are, uh, you know, they are very sensitive to the angle at which light is coming in. And that is something you want to avoid. So this random pyramids or this random texturing that uh, works uh, uh, that works uh, better. And it turns out, so this this uh, chart over here, it shows the improvement uh, in uh, uh, improvement in the short circuit current. So the most sensitive parameter to this light trapping is the short circuit current. So the more the number of uh, photons you'll be able to absorb, enhance using this light trapping, you see most of that gain coming into this uh, short circuit uh, current. And this shows uh, this uh, improvement for uh, different uh, schemes. So if I have uh, just a polished surface without any texturing, I get uh, this plot. And if I add pyramids on uh, on one surface, I get uh, I get an increase in my short circuit current. If I add those pyramids on uh, both surfaces, then I get a further increase. And the ideal thing for that is what is called as uh, in optics as a Lambertian uh, scheme of light trapping where it's just distributed uh, in a form where, uh, so we'll talk about Lambertian surface uh, later, but it approaches that of uh, Lambertian surface. And uh, you can see that uh, regular and random shaped uh, pyramids, they perform uh, equally well. And this was something, you know, which was studies uh, very extensively in the late, late 80s and the early 90s. And this handout uh, on the class website it uh, describes this uh, in more detail.